If you would take us through, Bobby, how the Secret Service protect a president as he goes around his golf course. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, they, they explain, they call his, um, his security team as he moves around this golf course like a security bubble that moves along with him. So it's, it's, it's projected out in all, um, you know, in all directions from him. And from what I understand, it was anywhere from 300 to 500 yards. Um, and, and so it moves with him. And, and so they were two holes ahead of him on the golf course and two holes behind him. Uh, kind of and moving in that direction so i think what happened was the edge the front leading edge of that bubble if you will um made contact or came into contact saw that barrel of that weapon sticking out of a bush and they decided maybe because just a a little while ago there was a previous attempt on trump's life that they were they were gonna kind of shoot first and ask questions later they from what i understand took shots at the at the rifle that was kind of uh, poking out of that bush, causing the gunman to drop the rifle and flee. Um, And so that's kind of what, what, what I understand happened. There seems to be no helicopter or drone support. Are you surprised by that? I really am, especially drones, um, because they can cover a large area and you can, unlike a helicopter with a drone, you can literally get down under a tree if you have an experienced pilot, which they should have. And they can actually go much lower than a helicopter to the ground and look around. Um, and, and I'm really surprised that they haven't deployed drones yet. There was a lot of talk about that, you know, on the first attempt on Trump's life a few weeks ago. And so I'm really surprised that they haven't kind of added that to their security apparatus because those drones are so valuable in this type of situation. Exactly. Where you have, you know, advancing, you know, have somebody moving through an open space. The drone can fly ahead of you. And like I said, if you see something suspicious from a high vantage point of the drone, you can then drop that drone down and get a much closer look. And and so I'm really surprised that they haven't deployed that. Bobby, what do we know about the suspect? Um, he was active on social media. He, You know, if, if some of the reporting is true that I've seen, he actually voted for Trump in 2016 for president, but then became disillusioned by some of his statements online with Trump as the president and then switched his allegiances to other candidates. Um, uh, he has a number of um, run-ins with the law. He was arrested m- many years ago for uh, possessing a unlawful, fully automatic uh, weapon, which is not legal in this country. Um, and so, um, yeah, he's got a number of uh, run-ins with law enforcement and he's got um, a fairly active uh, uh, social media where he vents on political issues. So there'll be a lot of meetings taking place today, Bobby, a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks assessing what went wrong. What are we going to see over the next however many days it is up to the election? Well, I think you're going to see a lot about him and what and what motivated him. Um, I think that you're going to see the Secret Service kind of take a little bit of credit, as they should, where they probably learned a lesson from the, the prior shooting of Trump and, and, and pushed his security apparatus out further from him. And that's why they caught this guy or they came into contact with this guy before he was ever close enough to Trump to take that shot, as happened in Pennsylvania a few weeks ago. So I think this is a they're going to kind of stand on a lessons learned type of thing and say, see, this is what we learned from Pennsylvania. We pushed out that security perimeter and that perimeter, those perimeter agents are what who came into contact with this guy, took the shots and, and ran the guy off. Bobby Shackon, thanks. You were with the FBI. You're now accommodated on U.S. security issues. Joined us from Los Angeles, 13 after 7. Listening, Dr. Laura Smith, who is a presidential historian at the University of Oxford and assist, assistant teaching professor at Arizona State University. Joining us from Phoenix, Arizona right now. Doctor, what is it about former President Trump's that excites this level of animosity or indeed potential uh, assassinations? Good morning. Good morning. Um, Yes, I I mean, the thing is, I keep hearkening back to the last time we had a president who was the victim of two assassination attempts very quick off the bat from each other. And that was, of course, Gerald Ford. And again, that was this sense of a disillusioned public, very fractured over foreign policy, fractured over the fact that they'd had an ex-president, Richard Nixon, go off into the sunset and comfort in California rather than being impeached and removed. He obviously resigned. And so a part of this sense of, you know, what is it with Donald Trump? Again, we have a very disillusioned public. We have angst over the economy. Uh, there's a lot of anger out there. And there's a lot of mental health issues, especially after the pandemic as well. Obviously, Donald Trump makes very, um, 
very strong rhetoric and evokes a lot of very strong feelings, but there's a lot of context that goes into that too. What can the authorities, what can the American political system do to try and calm the mood to a degree? That's the struggle. I mean, we are, what, 60 plus days from an election. Uh, you don't get much calm at, at this point. Mm. Um, I think that one of the issues is is President Biden keeps repeating the sense of, oh, well, this isn't American. This isn't what's in our history. And the problem is that doesn't smack as true. Uh, you know, uh, you're talking about a country that was born of political violence, that went through a civil war and has had presidents assassinated before. So I think coming to terms with that history and really racking rattling with it um, is, is the way forward rather than giving a sense of calm that is not there. You rightly reference we're 60 odd days and counting. What might this do for polling? Well, certainly you're right. Donald Trump is going to get a lot of media focus on this. He could potentially get a boost as well in the sense that, for example, um, I have an evangelical friend in Iowa. Uh, she is not uh, someone who feels very strongly about Donald Trump. But after the first assassination attempt, messaged me and, and said, no, um, you know, pass me the MAGA hat. Um, and this is a sense of feeling robbed of, of the chance to actually vote for the person of your choice. So uh, some Republicans who he may have lost now feel that actually I need to come out for democracy, very much in stark contrast to the message that Democrats have been pushing.